the Lord said let your light so shine that others may see your good work and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I pray that we'll do that very thing here in the church house today. I appreciate our choir and uh, Jane they're trying to push them so hard even without music here uh, at the church. Blake is still sick uh, this morning. Y'all continue to pray for him. We'll pray and he's going to be back in his place next week and for the whole week of revival. Uh, we look forward to that. Uh, and all the singing that week. Also, Abigail's not with us this morning. She's with her dad at church and uh, our piano player. So I need one of y'all to learn to play, to play the piano. So when they're not here, we got a piano player. Amen. So I'm going to just go ahead and just pick one of you in a minute until you start taking lessons, okay? And so we need that here uh, at the church. But thank God for the choir. I appreciate you being here today. And listen, while Brother Cliff plays a song for us, all that can and will, come gather in all for a few minutes today. And let's take a word of prayer in this place this morning, then we'll make some announcements and uh, do some things for the Lord here. Father, we love you. And God, again, we're so appreciative, uh, Lord, once again, to be in our house today. And God, we count it an honor. We count it a privilege, uh, Lord, to be where we are. And God, we count it a privilege, Lord, to have the people that are in this place, uh, Lord, this morning, those that have come to worship together in spirit and truth today. And I pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, in our worship today. God, help us to seek your face. Seek your will, God. Seek your guidance today, Lord, in all things. I pray, Father, you'd help me to preach today as a dying man to a dying people. And, God, that your word would just uh, go out and would not return void. 
Now, Lord, wherever it goes today, Father, I pray for the sick today, God, you'd heal and lift up. Father, in every way in their life today, Father, I pray, God, you'd help those going through trying times, whatever it may be. Lord, those that are traveling today that may not be able to be with us, Lord, because they're on vacation, bless them and strengthen them uh, today, give them traveling mercies to get back home. Those families that have lost loved ones, God, we pray for them today that you would help them and strengthen them, fill that void in their life. And God, I pray, Lord, for every pastor that's in the pulpit today, Father, you'd give them strength and bless them. Lord, give them unction from on high. Today, the preach the gospel. I pray, Lord, for every missionary, Lord, throughout the land today. God, that your will would be done in their life. Give them souls for the labor. Meet their every need. Go over and above, uh, God, in their life. And, Father, I just pray, God, for churches abroad, Father, that you'd help them. And, Lord, those that are fighting the battle, I pray, God, for those churches in Afghanistan. And, Lord, I, Lord, remember them again this morning. God, those that are willing to die, Lord, for the cause of Christ. God, would you help them and keep them, Lord, and just keep them safe. Lord, wherever they are, God, I pray for our nation today. And, God, we need revival, Lord, in this land. We need revival, uh, Lord, here in America. And I pray, God, that revival would come. I pray, Lord, for our upcoming revival. I pray for every person that's coming to preach, God, every testimony uh, that will be given, every song that will be sung, uh, God, that week, God, that would be anointed, Lord, from on high. And, God, you'd get the glory and the victory out of all of it. God, you'd rain down upon us that week and show us yourself real. And, Father, I pray that we would glorify you, God, in all that we do. Lord, use us for your glory this morning. Help us, Lord, right now, God, as we cannot help ourselves. And, Father, we'll thank you and love you for what you've done for us. And, God, I love to just praise you on credit right now for what you're going to do this day. We ask all these things in Christ's wonderful name. And all God's children said... Amen. Well, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. I appreciate you being here. Uh, there are some folks still, my, listen, my, my whole family is away uh, today. A lot of them are recovering and doing well, uh, but continue to pray for them. Blake has been very sick uh, this week. He was a little bit better yesterday, but Paige is better. Michael is definitely better. The rest of them are out because of that. Jane and I have kept our, tried to keep our distance from them uh, in every way that we can, and that's hard to do. Uh, sometimes, but you pray for them and then pray for others that are sick and going through some trying times. Uh, whatever it may be, pray that God will help them and uh, get them back. We do look forward to next Sunday, a lot of them being back with us. There are people traveling today. We've got a lot of folks on vacation uh, this weekend. This that last little rush at the end of the summer, you know, to get that last vacation time in, and I don't blame them. And listen, if I could have went, I'd have went too, amen? And so you pray for them. I want them to get back home safe and be ready to start revival. Uh, next week and so you pray much about that and what God have to do let me read this card to you today if I can it says dear New Life Baptist Church thank you for your prayers and for uh, for your uh, thank you for your prayers uh, and for for your let me read this amen um, I lost my place there no I ain't crazy um, oh, I thank you for your prayers and for your expression of sympathy during Sandra's passing. And thank you for the beautiful cross of flowers. We pray God will continue to bless you, each of you, Brother Randy Pleasant family, Brother Brian and all of them. We appreciate that. And continue to pray for them and hold them up to the Lord, uh, if you would. And then also several other announcements here today. Uh, remember, there again, next Monday night we start revival, okay? Uh, it's... There again, I, I want to say this, and I want to say it with all respect to uh, every preacher uh, and the brother Greg Locke. I love him to death, and I'm so glad he's coming. Uh, but uh, next Monday night's probably going to get a little crazy around here, trying to get everybody in here. Uh, we've got people calling, texting, uh, e uh, emailing, uh, Facebooking. I mean, we got people coming from three or four hours away to be here uh, on that night. I don't want to discourage anybody from coming. Uh, but I got a feeling we're going to be packed out. The overflow is going to be packed out in there. Downstairs is going to be packed out. We may even have to set up some chairs outside, keep those doors open, keep the air conditioning running wide open, whatever we have to do. Uh, but we're looking for God to do great things during our revival time. And so you pray for Brother Greg as he travels here and comes and, and uh, stays with us uh, and preaches for us that night. I am looking for souls to get saved. Uh, we did the soul winning class this morning in our Sunday school class. I didn't finish my part of it. I don't know if Jane and them did, but I'll finish up next week on that part uh, as far as soul winning. And uh, I know that uh, I believe God's going to save souls uh, during that whole week. I have filled 
uh, that Tuesday night. We've been praying our hearts out about that and what to do uh, and whether I was going to preach or not. And l- listen, if y'all know me well enough, y'all know that I am not the one that has to put myself in a position anywhere at all. And uh, it just so happened that uh, Brother Kidman texted me the other day. And we were texting back and forth, and I asked him where he was. He said, well, I'm back in North Carolina for the whole month of September. I said, well, good. Just come preach for me on Tuesday night then. And so he's going to come and preach for me on Tuesday night here at the church. And we're going to reach out to every veteran we can reach out to that night. Because most of you know that he's our missionary to the veterans. And he's been traveling all over the country preaching to them and winning veterans. And so we want to make it a point now to reach out to the veterans for that Tuesday night to fill this place up. For the glory of God. And then Brother Kidman will preach to us that night. Durham Rescue Mission. There again, I cannot express to you how important Wednesday night will be. Uh, There's a young lady, I've said this a couple of times, uh, that's going to give her testimony that night. And I'm going to tell you, it will bless your heart. It will touch your heart and stir you up. And I'm looking forward to her being here, them being here with their choir singing uh, that night. And if I do any preaching at all, it may be that night. We'll see. Uh, what God does through that, but I want her to have time to share uh, her testimony, and I'm telling you, it's awesome, and I believe it'll be a help to our church and to some people that may be going through some things in life. I believe that she can help them uh, in that, and so don't forget, uh, then don't forget Thursday and Friday, Dr. Kidd will be here uh, both of those nights, and I am just looking for God to do great things, amen? Uh, We need a revival. We need an awakening in the land. We need the church. Matter of fact, let me just say this to you. I want you to go after somebody and get them here next Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, I want you to be here, and I want you to go after all that you can and get them in the church house next Sunday morning. I'm going to preach something to you that God laid on my heart this week. I was reading through the Word of God and, and ran across one little portion in there that God has stirred my heart about all week long that I believe is going to stir the church for revival. Amen. Now, listen, I'm going to do one of two things next Sunday. I'm going to make you mad. Or I'm going to stir you up for revival. Amen. 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 I have already come to the conclusion it could be my last time I preach here. I'm already settled on that. God, if it's the last time, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to either stir the church for revival or I'm going to make them mad. Amen. Amen. So you mark it down. I need you to go grab it. You said, preacher, I ain't coming. Then you need to get right with God. You're exactly the one I'm talking to. Get mad and leave if you want to, but you're the one I'm talking to. Amen. I can tell you that now. So next Sunday, go grab somebody, get them to the house of God, and tell them my preacher said he's going to stir somebody up. Amen. Terry Lynch, a little Ellie, was witnessing the other day, and she ran across this old, distinguished man. Amen. Dressed up in a suit and tie and all. And said, Ellie said, I bet he tells people about Jesus. And she said, why do you say that, Ella? She said, because he's dressed like Preacher Mike. <laughs> Amen. He's old and distinguished. Amen. And so get him here next Sunday, and uh, we're going to have a good time in the Lord. By the way, we're not going to have a service here tonight. I realize it's Labor Day weekend. A lot of people got a lot of things going on, a lot of people away from us, so I'm going to give you the night off tonight. Also, I'll keep you as long as I can this morning give you the night off. Say amen right there. Amen. amen. And so, uh, but uh, don't forget, if you've not given out any revival flyers yet, give out some revival flyers this week. We still got some on the tables back there in the back, so carry them out this week. Uh, and give them out. We've got several things coming up, and I will be talking to the church here real soon. An old-fashioned day coming up uh, with a stew that we're going to feed the people here in the community. We're going to try to do that. I've set the date for October the 10th, and so hopefully that'll be a, a good day for us. It's the second Sunday in October. We're going to have an old-fashioned day. We're going to have an old-fashioned uh, bring old-fashioned cars, trucks, uh, 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 motorcycles, and old-fashioned people. Amen. Yeah. And uh, have an old-fashioned day, and we're going to feed everybody that comes that day, and have a good time. And Lord, we got a baptism coming up. And so if you're in here and you've been saved and you have not been baptized yet, then be sure to get with me. And we're trying to schedule up a baptism with several families that can be here at a certain time. And so don't forget that. And let me just say this, last but not least, uh, we've got an envelope fundraiser coming up that we're about to do. Okay, an envelope fundraiser. How many of y'all have heard about or seen our envelope fundraiser before? All right, a lot of you hadn't. Amen. We've got some things that we, that we fundraise for from time to time. We will just we'll get back with you on where all of this is going. It will go to a very good cause uh, in our church, but we're going to be giving out some envelopes. They will range from $1 to $150. No, I'm just, I, I, read, I redid every bit of that this week and calculated all the figures. Amen. 
And, uh, but they're going to range from $1 to $150. We're going to get rid of 150 envelopes this time. Amen? And uh, we'll get, with, get back with you on all of that. And uh, so I know that everybody in here is willing to take an envelope to help us out, right? Everybody say amen. amen. The kids, say, all you young people say amen. All you young people say amen. Not two of you, amen. We're going to, listen, we're going to come after your weekly allowance. Amen. We're going to give it to Jesus for a good cause. And so don't forget that. You may draw an envelope with a dollar on it, amen. If you do, you ought to at least give 20, but I'm just saying that. But anyway, we're going to, we, we fix and come out with an envelope fundraiser also for that, okay? All right, and I'll explain that to you in the, in the meeting. Go ahead, Mom. The book signing. Yes, if you come Monday night, next Monday night, September the 13th, if you want to be here early, uh, Greg Locke's going to be here at least one hour earlier to do a book signing or a Bible signing. If you want to buy his book, you can get him signed that. If you want your Bible signed, we're going to be set up in the fellowship hall, and we'll have to cut the line off for probably about quarter to seven so everybody can get up here and get prepared. Uh, for the service that night, but he'll be here an hour ahead of time if you would like to get his signature on anything for that week, okay, while he's here. All right, any other announcements today? Miss, Miss oh, a senior day trip this year. We probably do. I don't forgot that, Miss Joan, but we need to do one, amen? We'll have to work on that and plan a date for that. How many of you seniors like to go on a bus trip again this year? Amen, well, good. I, I always love that. Uh, and enjoy that, and I'm getting to be one of them, amen, so I enjoy it whether I'm one of them or not, uh, but we will plan a senior day, don't let me forget that, and we'll take off sometime in October and, and go up on a senior trip with a bus one day and, and take off somewhere, I love that, amen. How many of y'all would like a middle-aged day? <laughs> plan one, plan one and take me with you. I mean, hallelujah, help me out, Amen. But we'd love to do it. How many of y'all like a youth day just to take a youth day and go somewhere and have a good time? Just eat and ride and look and not have to worry, have to worry about nothing. Amen. That sounds good to me, too. Take a youth day. Amen. All right. Anything else today? Oh, yes. Miss Carrie is flashing this form at me. If you have not filled out the form yet, Miss Carrie has got a lot of stuff done uh, in our new database for our uh, church here. And uh, she... Has, uh, she's about to send me a copy of, whole, of, of all of it on my computer and put it on lockdown so I can't lose it. <laughs> Amen. We got some things worked out. But, by the way, I have all your birthdays now, too. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Something good come out of this. I have all your birthdays, all the September birthdays right now, October, November, December, and all those. But if you've not filled it out and you'd like your information in our database so we can reach out to you, I am looking forward to doing this and uh, getting some things out to you uh, on a weekly basis. So get that done and uh, get it back to her, and she will get you entered in there for that, okay? All right, anything else today? All right, if nothing else, then let's, uh, let's take an offering this morning. You guys come on up uh, today. Get our ushers come up today. And uh, Brother Gene, uh, well, he's, ta he's ushering though, isn't he? All right, well, Brother, Brother Cliff, you can just play something during our offering today if you don't mind then, it'll be fine. Play something during that time, and then after that, Brother Gene, Miss Kathy is going to sing one for us today. But let's go, Lord, in prayer, and uh, remember the offering time today. Brother Gene, pray for us, sir. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to be in your house today. We thank you for our Sunday school hour we've had and um, for what's running, plan of salvation. And we pray for all of our pastor this morning as he breaks the bread of Yes, God help us. Amen.
appreciate that, Brother Cliff. And uh, I love I love that song, but I'm going to tell you what, Miss Jennifer, I love to hear her sing that thing. I praise the Lord for that. Amen. But uh, Brother Gene and Miss Kathy are going to come sing one for us today. I guess just y'all two, Chevy helping y'all today? Just y'all two. Amen. They're going to come sing one for us today just before I preach. Amen. This song we're singing is an old song. Um, sometimes we get so busy we don't get to practice like we ought to at home. So we have to rely on our old songs that we know have done so many times. But just because it's old doesn't have a meaning. Um, this song is entitled, The Anchor Holds. And that anchor should be Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. <coughs> I have journeyed through the long dark night out on the open sea. By faith alone. Sight unknown, and yet his eyes were watching me. The anchor holds, though the ship is battered. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I faced the raging sea. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. I've had visions. I've had dreams. I've even held it in my hands. But I never knew it could slip right through me like they were only green. Of sin, the anchor holds. Though the ship is battered, the anchor holds. Though the sails are torn.
ship is battered, the anchor hold, though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I face Raging sea, the anchor holds in spite of the storm. I have fallen on my knees as I faced the raging sea, the anchor holds. Fight of the storm. Yeah. Yeah. In this world, anything else? I got a couple of things I want to show you uh, this morning. It's good to have Brother Ronnie and Miss Tammy back with us today. Get to have them home, amen. And uh, I appreciate them coming visit with us today. Brother Ronnie walked in this morning and uh, wanted to know if we had any Biden visitors here. And uh, we did have a couple today. And uh, Brother Cliff's going to show them to you here on the screen. We had a couple to show up. They were here when I got here this morning. And when I pulled in the parking lot, some of you probably seen them. Uh, but um, they were, and look where they were. That's what I saw when I pulled in the parking lot this morning at the church. And uh, that's what the world would like to see of the church is the buzzards taking it over. Uh, but I got news for them, amen. Uh, that's not going to happen. Why? We are anchored in Christ, Amen. Uh, we're anchored in the right thing. Now, they may take over a lot of them, but I got news for them. They can go ahead and leave here because uh, it's not going to happen. And I praise the Lord for that. So, yeah, Brother Ronnie, we did have two Biden, Biden folks to show up this morning. Uh, amen. That probably voted for him. And, uh, but they had, to, they had to leave. Amen. And so praise the Lord for that. And, uh, but I got another video that I want to show you that's a little more exciting than that. I got a video uh, that I took of Brother Pat McCoy while we were in Alaska a few weeks ago. I love Brother Pat, and uh, Brother Pat's got a song that he sings out there. He sang it before. He sang it at our church before. Some of you have not heard it, and uh, it's going to go along with my message this morning. I want you to hear this little song that I videoed to Brother Pat while I was at, and I hope you can hear it. But that's Brother Pat McCoy. That's the missionary there in Alaska, and I love this little song he does. Brother Cliff, let's see if we can pull that up and play it real quick. Hopefully it will.
I came here to stay. The decree will sign by the hands of the king, but Daniel still prayed to his Lord. Unreliant, faith was in. Here comes supper one. Troll. But you have been standing anywhere near. You have heard what the Daniel say. If you're talking about me, just forget it, boy. Because I came to be if you want to run, if you will, came here to stay. I see another, amen. But I want you to hear that song. We'll have to get it back up at some time so you can hear it. I love that little song Brother Pat plays right there. Uh, and it talks about, listen, listen, I'm not going anywhere. I came here to stay. He's planted. Uh, and after they sang that song uh, about the anchor holes, amen. And I thank God for that. And men like that, that will stay planted uh, where God plants them at. I want you to turn your Bible this morning, Acts chapter number 28. Acts chapter number 28, I was reading this week and just begging God and praying uh, for a message, and I've been working on uh, revival messages, and uh, I've been working on Sunday morning messages, and, and uh, just begin to finish some of them here, and I ran across this this week, and I want to try to encourage you with it uh, if I can, and uh, Acts chapter number 28, very familiar story here, uh, we know that Paul had been shipwrecked and uh, landed on the island of Melita here, uh, and there's a special, something special about to take, take place. And it says in Acts 28 and verse number 1, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain, because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. Now, some of you may remember that I preached there a couple of years ago on what to do when you've had a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Anybody ever had one of them? Amen. What to do when you've had a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Matter of fact, I got that from a little kid's book, amen. Sitting around reading, used to read to my kids all the time, and a little kid wrote that about his school. And, uh, but it's, what do you do when you have one of those days? Same thing Paul did, shake it off. Shake it off, amen. Uh, boy, we sure get burdened down with the things of this world and burdened down with the things of life. We get, listen, we get burdened with about anything this day and time. And uh, America is burdened right now, amen. The world is burdened right now. It's fixing to get a lot worse because they're all complaining that because the federal employment is about to be cut out, you know, they're not going to get the checks anymore, and some folks got to go back to work. That's fixing that's fix to be a burdensome thing for America. But uh, listen, they have no excuse for it because I see now hiring signs all over the place. I see more signs than that, and I do anything at all. Amen? But listen, there, there's times in our life when we have a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Shake it off. Amen? we got to move forward for God. That's not my message today. I don't want to remind you of that. Verse 4 says, When the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. They said, Hey, he might have got off that sea, but don't you understand? God caught up with him. That beast caught up with him. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. And that's what the world is waiting for the church to do now. They're waiting, Christians, they're waiting. They're waiting for you to fall. Uh, they're waiting for you to die. Amen. They're waiting for the church to close its doors. Uh, they're waiting for the buzzers to overtake us. Amen. 
I uh, still got news for them. The Bible says in the end we win. Amen. And so they, when they, he should have swollen and fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, listen to this, and saw no harm came to him. Listen to this. Underline this in your Bible. They changed their minds. They changed their minds. And said that he was a God. I want to preach to you on this thought today for a few minutes if I can. I ain't changing your, my mind. I'm changing yours. Amen. Amen. I ain't changing my mind. I'm changing yours. Too many times we live, well, right now we know that we live in a no doubt ever changing world every day right now. I've never seen so many changes come so quick in America. And it's ever changing in America now in our customs. Uh, that's a daily thing. It's ever changing in our culture. Uh, it's ever-changing in our churches today. It's ever-changing in our church membership uh, today. It's ever-changing in our homes today. It's ever-changing in our workplaces today. Most people that I know of are almost afraid to go to work tomorrow because they don't know what change they're going to run into tomorrow. Amen? Uh, everything was going good on Friday, but when you get back on Monday, uh, everything could change before you get back. Amen? And so we are in an ever-changing culture in America, and everything that we do today, uh, people are changing. And let me tell you what they're trying to do. They're trying to change us. I do not, cannot tell you the number of times that we've heard this, you know, you sure you won't change your mind about it, amen? You sure you won't uh, consider it. You sure you won't change your mind about this. And listen, I want to be like Brother Pat was, on that video right there, if you'd have heard the rest of it, you'll find out that he says, hey, I ain't running for him, and I came here to stay. I'm not changing my mind. I was sitting at the table, and this is what caused me to go back and study this again. Yesterday, I was sitting around the table this week with a, a couple, and they were talking about kids. And, and uh, how many of you know that a kid can be stubborn? Amen. And we were talking about kids, and they are talking about how stubborn a, a little kid was and they were talking about uh this the the, the daughter and and said uh, the daddy said this said you know the problem is when she gets her mind made up on something that uh there's no reckoning with her that, that there's no talking to her about it and, and i'm sitting here thinking think in a lot of ways thank god amen because there's too many of them changing their mind about different things and swaying back and forth. Now, I think there ought to be some things that we're set in. Amen. Listen, even as a child, a child gets set in their way sometimes. And I understand that we want to beat that way out of them. But sometimes they grow up and it helps them in life to be set in their ways in some things. And I don't know about you, but there's some things I'm not changing my mind about. But I'm going to change yours about. Amen. And we're just going to stay there until we change your mind and not let you change our mind. Hey, Paul set the example here. They said, Paul, listen, Paul just did what he was supposed to do here and shook it off. And they said, hey, the Bible says they changed their mind about Paul, about being dead and about falling down, about swelling up from the snake bite and about how God was after him for vengeance or uh, uh, those kind of things. Listen, Paul set the example for us right here uh, for you and I to stand on some things. And not to change our mind. Now listen, Hebrews 13, 8. The Bible says God the same yesterday, today, and forever. God changes not according to Malachi chapter number 3 and verse number 6. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. I'm glad we have a God that does not change. Amen. Listen, he may change the mind of others. But I got a God that's not going to change. Whether you like it or I like it or Joe Biden like it. Or they listen, the administration like it or anybody else. Uh, don't like it. I'm glad we got a God that's not going to change his mind just because somebody don't like it. I'll tell you what, we're in a generation, we're in a situation right now. If they can force you to change your mind about something, they're going to force you to change your mind. They're going to force you through guilt uh, today and make you do some things. But listen, you better get your mind made up. You better get solid and you ain't going to reckon with that crowd that I'm going to stick to the Word of God. And if the Word of God says it, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not moving from that. We're not swaying from that. Like it, lump it, jump it, or bump it. That don't mean you have to come hear me. But we're going to stick to the Word of God. Amen. 
Matter of fact, Solomon said this in Proverbs 24 and 21. He says, meddle not with them that are given to change. Meddle not with them that go with the flow. Amen. I've got some out there that don't mind just going with the flow. And they're like, preacher, you need to get on board. And I said, no, I'm not riding that ship just so you know. Uh, that train's headed for a crash, and I don't care to get on it. Why? Because God's Word says so. He said, meddle not with those that are given the change in their life. And it's a thing over and over and over again. The, the Bible said that, that he was talking about uh, Daniel a while ago. He said this about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible said, talking about the king, that his visage or his vision was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when he saw that their mind was not going to change. The king changed his mind. It said the same thing about the same king. When it came to Daniel, the Bible says that the king's countenance changed against Daniel when Daniel decided he was going to stay in the lion's den and he didn't need to get out and he was going to be okay. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, hey, send them if you want to, but if God don't come, we still ain't changing, amen. We still ain't bowing down. Listen, just throw us in that, heat it up. Do what you got to do. Listen, he's still God regardless of whether they eat us up, burn us up. He's still God no matter what. And I ain't changing for it, amen. I'm set in my ways in a lot of things. And there's some things about me that I am not going to change. There will be some things about the church that the church is not willing to change. And too many times, man, we're trying to go with the flow and we're changing over every little thing that comes along. I began to think this week about some things I'm not going to change in. I, I don't think the church ought to change in. Number one, I don't think we ought to change in the Word of God. Amen. Let me say that again. I ain't changing in the Word of God. I ain't changing in my beliefs when it comes to the Word of God. I don't care if the world don't like it. I, I know, listen, I, I know it's tough on but the Bible says it's sharpening the two-edged sword. It cuts deep to the sun to the soul. That's your Brother Mike, you can't. You got to be careful how you preach that anymore. Listen, it's still Bible, amen. I still believe in the authenticity of the Bible. I still believe in the authority of the Bible. I still believe in the activity of the Bible. I still believe it's inspired. I still believe it's inerrant. I still believe it's infallible. I still believe it's a book of wonder, amen. I still believe it's a book of worship. I still believe it's a book of warfare. I still believe it's the greatest book of wisdom there ever was, amen. I still believe in the Word of God, and I ain't changing my mind when it comes to the Word of God. We ain't going to change. I ain't changing my mind. I want to change yours. People Brother Mike, I don't know about that Bible. Listen, they're falling away everywhere now. They're saying, well, you know, I used to believe all of it, but I'm not sure I believe all of it anymore. He ought to get right with God. Well, you know, we've, we've studied this, and we've researched this, and we just don't believe how you wasn't there anyway. Shut up. Amen. God used inspired men of God to write it down. That's why he didn't use you because you'll sway the other way. That's why he didn't use you because you're eligible to change and go uh, with the flow. That's why he didn't use you to pin it down. Somebody else might have said something you like. Listen, I've been there and watched. I've seen the places where I, I believe it more today than I ever believed in my entire life. Amen. I made that trip to Israel, and there's some things that come to life in me. Brother, Brother Ralph taught me this over there. He, over there he said there's four Gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then there's a land. Amen. And I love what he said over and over every day. Brother Mike, y'all remember this? Brother Ralph said it happened right here, right now. Amen. I've been there where it took place, and I still believe it's infallible. I still believe it's authentic. I still believe it's the Word of God. Listen, it's that book of wonder. It's that book of wisdom. It's a roadmap for our direction. It's a manual for our discretion. It's a mirror for our display, uh, discipline. Listen, I read it to be wise. I believe it to be saved. I practice it to be holy, and I obey it to be blessed. It is the Word of God. There are those today that's trying to get away from it. Everywhere I go, they're changing their mind. They're getting a new book. Well, I like this one over here because it's not as hard. I'd rather read a book than read the Bible. I'm not changing my mind on the Word of God. I'm going to change theirs. Amen? And if I don't change theirs, God is one day. God's going to change their mind one day. Amen? Because I promise you, every word of it is going to come true before it's over. Listen, you and I, if we want to be wise, read the Word of God. You want to be saved? Believe the Word of God. You want to be holy? Practice the Word of God. You want to be blessed? Obey the Word of God. Everybody wants to be blessed, but nobody wants to obey the Word of God. God bless me, 
God poured out of my family. God said, that's fine. Go get in church and get your life right. Follow the commandments of God. Do what's right in the sight of God. Go witness to your neighbor. Give to the church. Do the things that are right. Well, God, I don't want to do all that, but I want to know. If you want to, do you want to be blessed, obey the word of God. It's still true. We're not going to change from that. We're too busy now patting people on the back and telling them they're okay. Everything's fine. You don't have to worry about that part of it right there. No, I'm not changing my mind. When it comes to the Word of God, I'm changing yours. Amen. Listen, we're going to have to be bold in some things in these last days. We've got to stand and not move on some things. I'm going to just say this today. I'm not changing my mind on the way to God either. Amen. That crowd said there's more than one way they ought to get right with God. The devil's got them blinded. John 14, 6, John, God's clear over there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Amen? Baptism ain't going to get them there. Church membership ain't going to get them there. Denominationalism ain't going to get them there. Socialism ain't going to get them there. Listen, you can hook up with anything you want to hook up with, but if you're not hooked up with God and you didn't come through the way of the cross and you didn't come through the blood, you're lost, you're not saved. There's only one way to God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father. Listen, it has to be by God and by God alone. Listen, I'm not changing my mind on that. Listen, they can change their mind. We're the ones that have to set the example for it. Too many times we don't want to offend people. We talked about it in our Sunday school class this morning. We're trying to be as nice as we can when we go out witnessing people and tell them they're lost. But there's sometimes we need to be bold. We need to be truthful in love. I don't mean we've got to be ugly to them, but we need to be truthful in love. And sometimes that's even hard, especially in the generation we live in today. What's that one way? You've got to realize you're a sinner. You know, there's, there's people trying to get to heaven that hadn't realized they're a sinner yet. <laughs> Amen. Let me say that again. There's people trying to get to heaven that hadn't realized they're a sinner yet. Amen. Let me, just, let me just give you some news today. You were born a sinner. I don't care if you were born with a gold spoon in your mouth, silver spoon in your mouth, but born to the best family there is. I don't care if your dad has drove a Mercedes all your life and you lived in a mansion all your life. I don't care if every bill you've had ever been paid all the way. Listen, you were born a sinner until you and I realize that we are sinners. Guess what? We will not get to heaven. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. We must realize we're sinners. That's what America don't want to do today. That's what the church don't want to do today. Amen. Nobody wants to realize they're a sinner. Listen, I'm just a sinner saved by God's grace. I remember the day I figured out I was no count. I, re I, realized, I remember the night I realized my sin's going to send me to a devil's hell. I remember calling on the Lord Jesus Christ and coming to my heart and save me because I knew without him I'd die and go to a devil's hell. Listen, I, I, I had to say to myself, and there was enough people told me I wasn't no count, but I didn't believe them until I figured it out for myself. See, there are probably enough people tell you you ain't no good and your family wasn't no good. And uh, Listen, but until you figure it out yourself, Amen, you got a problem, amen. Somebody used to tell me all the time that I, I was sorry. I, I get mad, wouldn't want to whip them, amen. Then I figured out one day, Brother Bug, I was sorry. I wasn't no count. I wasn't nothing but a lost sinner headed for a devil's hell. And I needed a holy God to come to my heart and save me, amen. And I knew he was the only way. Listen, I, I, I was going to try some other ways, but I figured out real quick that it didn't work. But there's those sitting in God's house, sitting all over the place. That they're trying every way that they can. You, if you don't believe it, ask them. Listen, you go out in the world and you start witnessing, hey, can I tell you about Jesus? They said, I'm a Baptist. I don't give a flip what you are. Are you saved? Hey, man, listen, you didn't have to figure out you was a sinner to get to be a Baptist. The Baptist church, and I is one of them, they done got to the place they'll almost accept anything. Hey, man, yeah, you're welcome. Bring it in. It's okay. I've said this before. Listen, it took me a while to figure this out, and I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it with all humility in my heart today. Listen, everybody's welcome in this church to a certain extent. But if you're about to come in here and bring something against the Word of God that's not doctrinally right, you ain't welcome. Amen. You can come in and sit on the pew, keep your mouth shut, and listen to the preaching, and get under conviction and get right with God. I'm okay with it. But we, want to, we don't want to hear from you if it's not the Word of God. Amen? Well, you ought to give everybody a voice. Not in this church. 
Not in this church. I ain't a dictator, but I ain't stupid either. I've had those that come in for say, Preacher, can I get up and give word? No. You can tell me your testimony, and we'll talk about it. Amen? If you want to sit down and have a little meeting, we'll sit down and talk about it, and we'll talk about your testimony, whether it's right or not. If it's right, I'll let you up there. If it ain't, you ain't getting up there. You ain't come in and confuse my people. Amen? You ain't come in and say something crazy. Well, it did, did not. No, 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 no. Ain't, ain't going to happen. Listen, you've got to realize we're a sinner. I, I still believe there's one way to God. There's one way to God. You've got to realize you're a sinner. Number two, there has to be repentance toward God. I told him in the Sunday school class this morning, we're forevermore trying to lead people to the Lord in a prayer of salvation without a prayer of repentance. Because that's embarrassing to people. They want to pray a prayer of salvation. Lord, come to my heart and save me. But listen, I, I ain't got time to stay here today. I'd park here for a while. But there has to be repentance before there can be salvation. There has to be repentance toward God. You, listen, you, you didn't sin against me. I, I don't care what you've done to me. I don't care if you've run me down and told people I was the sorriest piece of dirt you ever come across. If I was the sorriest preacher you ever heard in your entire life. I don't care if you tell them every dirty, rotten sin that you've ever found out on me. I don't care. You didn't sin against me. You sinned against God. You can't sin against me. I'm the only one can sin against me. I'm the only one going to answer for my sin. There ain't nothing you can put on me that will hurt me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Listen, but there's something you can do against God. Listen, that you'll not get saved and get your heart right with God. There has to be repentance toward God in all that we do. We got them now. They want to go down. and I'm not completely against all of this. I don't reckon they want to go down and shake a preacher's hand right up here. And that's as far as they want to get. Amen. Amen. I've had them come to me and shake my hand. I said, Preacher, preacher I just want to tell you, you know, I did this. I said, well, get on the altar and repent. No, uh, I just want to shake, you, shake a preacher's hand. I, I can't help you in that. I'll, I'll send you in the right direction. Amen. Get on the altar and repent. You know, they come, oh, 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 get on the altar and repent. You know, I don't know what to get on the altar and repent. They don't need to tell me about it. I don't need to hear about it. I don't need to think about it. Get on the altar and repent. There has to be repentance toward God. Listen, there's only one way to God. Listen, we've got to realize we're a sinner. We've got to have repentance toward God. We have to recognize that Christ died for us, and we must receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith into our heart and know that he's Lord and Master and Savior of our life. Hardly anybody wants to take instruction anymore. It's the hardest thing I know of, especially for a man. How I many of you, you women should have said amen right there? Amen. I'm with you, because I is one of them. I don't like taking instruction. Tell me a man that does. I mean, it's hard to take instruction. But we're going to have to learn to take instruction from God. We've got to realize that He is Lord and Master. And Savior of our lives. I've said this before. My wife, I don't mean any harm by this, and she knows it. Very seldom do I ever tell her what I'm going to preach. I, I mean, it has to be few and far between. She'll say sometimes, she said, Daddy, you been, I heard you say, I said, yeah. She said, you going to tell me what it is? I said, no. Amen? Because I don't want her instruction on me. Amen? Because I know how she is. She's humble enough. She loves y'all enough to go, you sure you ought to tell them that? And then it makes it tough. You know? Because, <laughs> I don't mean it's ugly. I'm at home with her. I ain't at home with God yet. <laughs> but I know, I'm I know I'm going home to be with God. Yeah. Amen? And I got to decide whether I want to just do what's right in the sight of God now, you know, and then go home or not do what's right and stay home here and be at peace. Amen? Or be laid in peace tonight with God when she said, uh, Daddy, uh, I'm not sure, you know. I don't want instruction from her. I want instruction from God. Amen? But listen, we have to realize we're sinners. There's only one way to God. I'm, I'm not going to change my mind on that. I'm going to change their mind on that. 
Amen. I want the world mind changed. Because do we not live in a generation in the world now? They'll tell you there's every way in the world you can get that. Oh, if you go up front and you let them dip you a little bit, you'll go. If you let them sprinkle you a little bit, you'll go. If you go up and let them lay his hand on your head and pray over you, you'll go. Oh, that's a lie from hell. There's one way to God. There's one way to God. For all you Facebook people that's watching, text me, call me, email me if you want to. There is still one way to God. Matter of fact, that message won't stay on Facebook long. They'll kick it off. They don't even like that saying. You know who kicks it off? That liberal crowd that don't believe it. Amen. They don't believe the Word of God. They'll kick you off in a minute. And they, listen, here's the bad thing. What I'm saying today, they kick me off. They'll put the COVID-19 restrictions under it. What in the world has my message got to do with COVID-19 today? But every time they kick me off, they put COVID-19 restrictions under it. I'm like, I ain't even mentioned COVID. You know, the, I guess they think I'm sick <laughs> for preaching. Right. Amen? And they want to put restrictions on it. Why? Because you say, there's only one way. There's only one way. I ain't changing my mind. I'm going to try to change your mind, but I ain't changing my mind. I don't care how good you are, what job you have, or anything else. There's only one way to God. Preacher, I've been in my church 50 years. I don't care. There's still only one way. Your preacher should have told you that a long time ago. Amen. Somebody said recently, and this is sad, they said out of their own mouth, I know I'm not getting fed at my church. But I can't leave it. Why? Why? I'm not trying to get people to leave their church and come here. But listen, if you ain't getting fed, if, if I go to a restaurant a few times, they don't feed me. Matter of fact, if I go there probably one time, they don't feed me. I ain't going back. Now, I may give them the benefit of the doubt and get some bad food one time and give them a second chance. But if I go there, listen, and I leave completely hungry, like I ain't eating nothing, I paid all that money, Brother Mike, you think I'm going, I ain't going back over there? I'm going where there's some food at. Amen. Amen. I'm going where I can be filled when I leave there. I ain't wasting my time, and I ain't wasting my money to go somewhere I ain't going to be able to eat. Amen. You know what it is? They don't want to leave a building. But they don't want to hear the truth. Amen. I, I haven't told me from time. Well, Brother Mike, I would come out there, but don't butt me. You can butt me all you want to, but I'll butt heads with you all day long. I'm not going to stop preaching the truth. Amen. Just because you don't want to come out here, that's your problem. That's not mine. Amen. Listen, that, listen, I'm not changing my mind on the Word of God. I'm not changing my mind on the way to God. Listen to this right here. I love this. I'm not changing my mind on the worship of God. Amen. Amen. I'm not changing my mind on the worship of God. Let me, tell you, let, me, let me give you some things. Matter of fact, go with me to John chapter number 4. John chapter number 4, verse 24. I'm going to read one verse to you. John chapter number 4, verse 24. I am not changing my mind when it comes to the worship of God. Amen. John chapter 4, verse number 24. Look what it says. God is a spirit, and they that worship him, listen to this, must, must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me give you several things about worship. Most of the people that go to church on Sunday morning don't worship. Let me say that again. I ain't changing my mind on this. I'm going to change yours. Most of the people that go to church on Sunday morning do not worship. I'll tell you why. Worship is to be a scriptural thing. Amen. Amen. Not only that, according to this, worship is to be a spiritual thing. Oh, I wish I had some people get spiritual every now and then. Amen. I, 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 sometimes I just wish I had some people get spiritual with me every, every now and then. Just, just get a little excited. I, I, I ain't talking about just going crazy. I'm just talking about a little bit of excitement. Amen. I believe spirituality is excitement a lot of times. I believe at least put a smile on their face. Amen. I, I believe it causes if, if it wasn't nothing but amen. I believe we'd have to squeak something out. Just a little glory. Just a little glory every now and then. Why? It, it's a spiritual thing. Worship, listen, 
we that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Coming to Sunday school is not worship. Coming to church, hearing a preacher is not worship. All these worship places called they, they don't change that they don't change the Baptist church to the worship center. I don't care. You can have my name over the door. I don't care. I'm still saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. I got that through the blood, amen, because they had a call on Jesus to save my wretched soul. Amen. You can have my name over the door, amen. But when I come to church, I like to come to worship. Amen. amen. I, 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 I like to come and just get scriptural. I don't want to come to church without getting scriptural. Amen. I, even if it's through song, I want to be, I want to be a scriptural song. I mean, that, that song they sang this morning, that's a scriptural song. The anchor holds. I mean, that's scriptural. I mean, I, I, when I, come, when I come, to, come to church and worship Brother Danny, I want it to be spiritual. I mean, I, I don't want some, some dead, drug out service that uh, half the people are falling asleep in and you can't, you can't listen. You, you leave the same way. Listen, we ought to be different when we go out of here. There's something about our worship. Let me, let me just say this to you about worship, and some of you have heard me say this before. Worship not to be only be scriptural and be spiritual. Worship is to be sacrificial. Let me read something to you. Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew chapter 26. Let me read this to you today. I love this story right here, and I could park right here and preach for a good while. Matthew chapter number 26. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ornament and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, that was a bunch of Baptist deacons, <laughs> Methodist deacons, Presbyterian deacons, I mean Catholic deacons, whatever. But when his disciples, his deacons, Saw it. They had indignation. They were, they were bent out of shape. Saying, to what purpose is this waste? Can you believe that? She brought something to Jesus and they called it wasteful. Let me say that again. She brought something to Jesus and they called it wasteful. I think it's a waste of your time if you don't bring something to Jesus. I, I think it's a waste of my time today if I don't bring something to Jesus. It, listen, I have wasted my time today if I don't bring him some glory from the pulpit this morning. It, it, I done wasted my time here today if I'm not a voice for him in this place this morning. There may be some people walk out and say, that was a waste of time. Amen. Walk out and go, somebody ask you at lunch, what did the preacher preach on today? I don't know. He was just loud and long. That was a waste of time. I didn't come here to waste time this morning. I, wanna, I don't want to be wasteful for Jesus. But that crowd, that crowd, and can I tell you that the world saying about that crowd today, they're just wasting their time. Not this boy. I came here to worship. I didn't come here to waste time. I came here for something scriptural. <laughs> I came here for something spiritual. I came here for something sacrificial today. I'm going to stand on that. And I ain't moving that. But listen, it goes on to say, said they said, waste for this ornament might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And Jesus understood it. He said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? Uh, for she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For then she hath poured this ornament on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Why? Because she brought something to Jesus. Let me say that again. She brought something to Jesus. I wrote this little statement down this morning about 6.30 while I was in my office, amen. To get something from God, you got to bring something to God. Let me say that again. To get something from God, 
you got to bring something to God. Can I tell you that the average, I'm going to use the Baptist church again because I am one of them, that the average Baptist church today is going to leave empty-hearted and empty-handed today. They're going to walk out of the building today. They're going to be in a, be in a, going through a Sunday school class. They're going to be in a listen to the choir today. They're going to be in a listen to some special singing today. They're going to be in a listen to a preacher stand up uh, and, and blast his lungs out today. And they're going to walk out the door empty-hearted and empty-handed because they didn't bring anything to offer God today. They came seeking something. And they didn't bring anything at all to offer God. See, worship is sacrificial. Worship is when we got an offering to God. Worship is when we got an offering for it. Let, 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 let me just go ahead and put the question real blunt today. What did you bring God today? Well, it brought him all my troubles. Really? Is that the only thing you have to offer him? Amen? You, you, you ever thought about just offering him your praise for a little while? Yeah. You ever just talked about offering, offering him a song? Well, I can't sing. Listen, sing anyway. I can't sing either, but every now and then I just offer God a song. I mean, I walk through the church sometimes just singing my heart out. I walk through the house sometimes singing my heart out. I, listen, I, I just offer God a song. And every now and then, Jane, Jane come through that this morning. I'll be honest with you, I, I was in there by myself. I went outside today just walking around outside this morning by myself. But Brother Danny, I, I was already weeping and getting in the, getting in the glory this morning. Just, I, and you know what I was saying? I, of course, I was thinking about this, Miss Joan. I said, God, what, what, did I, what did I have to offer you today? What can I offer you today? In my case, God said, go preach the gospel. Just go give them the gospel. Man, you ain't got to be nobody. You ain't got to be no hero. Just read the word of God. Just give them. I got cold chills right here. I, Jane, I went back through the house in there. Miss Kathy, I'm going to walk around there and, and weeping. I, Jane, Jane, come down. I was in the bathroom gra grabbing tissues. She said, what are you doing? I, I said, just grabbing some tissues, baby. Just, and she said, don't start that on me this morning. You know why, Brother Dan? I, I, just, I just want something to offer God today. Amen. Lord, what can I offer up to you today? Listen, don't leave out of here as a Christian today, empty-hearted and empty-handed, and not bring God anything at all. For worship. Yeah, listen, most, most, most people walk in the church house today. So I, God, you got to help me today. And I understand all that. God, if you don't help me today, I ain't going to make it. You better bring something to God. What are you willing to give to God today for God to help you? This woman bought the most expensive gift that there was. Probably the most expensive gift she'd ever had in her hand. She bought it to God. I was reading one of the stories, Mama and your Christian woman had book, womanhood book uh, this morning and talked about you know, one of those that, that came and that, that was at a missions conference. And I, I, I remember some of these stories from, from years ago that Joe and Tanner Collins, I, I mentioned this years ago, uh, Joe and Tanner Collins were, were missionaries to, to Tiberia uh, years ago and, and they were sitting in a missions conference and, and the missionary was preaching and preaching his heart out, talking about giving to the Lord and and she said that, uh, they said that Joe and Tanner both said God started dealing with them about what to do for missions and what to do about going to the uh, mission field. And she said, God, I don't have anything to give. She said, God, we're just poor. We can't hardly put groceries on the table. She said, I don't have anything to give. She said, all of a sudden, God pricked her heart. I don't even know if I can get mine off. My finger swole so bad. Give me one of them diamonds you got there, Mama. <laughs> Hallelujah. I bet y'all women run up here now. <laughs> so Tanner Collins sit there in that missions conference. God would have been a, begin to burden her heart. And she said, God, I don't have anything to give, but I'm going to have you give you all I got. So she slid a wedding band off. And the offering plate was passed that night. Little Tanner dropped that in the offering plate that night. Told God, said, God, if you can use it, you take it. Use it. Well, I've taken up the offering. One of the men taking the offering saw her drop that thing in there. And said, after he went and told the preacher, the preacher, that little young lady back there, dropped her wedding band in the offering plate tonight. They saved it for her and gave it back to her. And helped that family out. But she gave everything she had. She wanted to worship God. 
and our giving. You know what stops us from our worship most of the time? We're not willing to give God at all. Matter of fact, most of the time we don't bring God anything at all. We come to church such a needy people, and we are needy people. But we don't come just said, God, here it is. Brother Mike, I don't have anything. You have yourself. You have that vessel you're walking in. You have that voice on you. You can make a phone call for God. You have those legs on you and your hands. You could go knock a door for God. Listen, we have so much to offer God, and yet, yet still we don't offer God anything at all. But we want to worship. You cannot worship without sacrifice. It has to be scriptural. It has to be spiritual. It has to be sacrificial if we're going to worship God. Let me give you this back, Mom, before somebody steals it. We are, we are in a Baptist church. Amen. I'm just kidding. Y'all know I'm kidding. Amen. Listen, <laughs> she being a forgot it. Amen. But if it's not in that fashion, it's not worship. I'm still going to stick to my belief, and I ain't changing this. I ain't changing my mind. I want to change your mind. That if we're going to worship, we're going to have to bring an offering to God. Every person sitting in here has something to offer God. Bro, Cliff, get ready to play me something. I'm going to stop right here because I just feel the Spirit just lead me, just quit. I think we're at a place, listen. I think we're at a place, it's just time to stop this morning. And say, God, what do I have to offer you? God, what can I bring to you? Because I want to be able to worship you. It's th this is enough about me, and it's enough about what I came here for today and my self-pity and my selfishness, and God, I just want you to bless me so I can go out and do this. God, I want you to prick my heart right now. What can I bring to you? What can I bring to you? 